Number one, suppose a man stands in front of a mirror shown in the figure below. His eyes are 1.6 meters above the floor and the top of his head is 0.13 meters higher than his eyes, I guess. Find the height above the floor of the top and bottom of the smallest mirror in which you can see both the top of his head and his feet. All right. So, um, okay. So the whole idea is this, that in order for the man to see, okay, his feet in a mirror, the light here or the image that is being produced by his feet have to then travel in this direction, hit the bottom edge of the mirror and then be reflected back into his eyes. All right. Now, since this is dealing with a mirror here, we're dealing with the laws of reflection, and there is this law that you should know. I'm going to draw a normal to the mirror. That is a perpendicular line to the plane here of the mirror, okay? What it says is that the angle, let's say, of incidence, this would be the angle of incidence, has to be equal to the angle of reflection, okay? That is a law for mirrors, okay? The angle of incidence has to equal the angle of reflection. Now consider this, that if I were to create now, let's say two triangles, okay, let's say from his eyes down to the normal, and then from the normal down to his feet, okay. Now I know this isn't really closed off, but you know, imagine it is. If these two angles are therefore equal, then that means the sides opposite to them must also be equal, okay? Now, what that means is that whatever this distance is here from the bottom of the floor to the normal is going to be equal to this distance from his eyes then to the normal. So if they told us now that the total distance from the man's eyes all the way down to the floor is equal to 1.65 meters, we can find both of these now x values if we wanted. Right? All we would simply do is just take the 1.65 and divide it by 2. So what that means is that this is about there, uh, this x in here now, so let's erase this part. This part in here is about 0 0.825 now meters, and so is this, 0 0.825 meters. Okay? Now, what about this part? What about this reflection up at the top now? Well, the same principles apply. In order for the man to see the top of his head, the light reflecting off the top of his head must travel to the top of the mirror and then reflect back into his eyes, okay? So we have the same principles that apply. This one's gonna get a little harder to kind of see because you know the angle is not that large there, but the angle of uh, incidence will equal the angle of reflection and therefore, these two, this distance here, I know this is a little small, but the distance here then must equal the distance there, right? It's the same thing. We can break them down into both X's, blah, 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 blah. And they also told us now that the total distance between the man's eyes and the top of his head is equal to 0 0.13 meters. So what that means is that each of these then values, the X's will be half of that, right? So this little, this little length then in here is going to be half of uh, 13 or 0.13, right? So half of that is going to be 0 0.065, okay? And since it's early, I'm just going to throw that on into the calculator. Oh, goodness, thank goodness it's right. Okay, so here, that's going to be that X value at the top, okay? Now, let's we, get, we basically know everything we need to know. And now we can calculate, all right, the, the answer to this question. It says, find the height above the floor. Okay, well, how high is it above the floor? Well, you're like, well, here it is, right? The bottom of the mirror, right? It's about 0.825 meters above. So 0 0.825 meters above floor. Good. And then it says, uh, and the bottom, right? From the top and the bottom. Okay, so now how high then is the top of the mirror relative to the floor from this line all the way down? Why don't I choose a different color, right? We'll do that in purple. So how high is it from the top of the mirror then all the way down. Well, if I drew another line this way, okay, we realize that it is 0 0.825 plus then this distance of 0 0.825 plus then this tiny little part in there, which was the 0 0.065. 
So we can just add those two together, or in other words, take the 1.65 and add to that 0 0.065. So 1.715. So this is 1.715 meters above floor. And I'll say floof, above the floor, okay? And this is the top part, and this one was now the bottom, okay? This was the bottom. So it now says, uh, ba, 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 you know, what's the top? Find the height above the floor. Okay. All right. How is this distance related to the man's height? So how is this distance? Well, I mean, I don't know what they mean by how is it related to his height. I mean, we kind of analyze every little nitty gritty detail here. So, you know, pick what you want. Um, you know, we could also find the total length of the mirror, right? We would do that by just subtracting these values. Why don't we just do that quickly? It doesn't really uh, matter, but we can simply just take those two values and subtract them. So 0.825, oh, 0.826, I subtracted it, right? 1.715 minus then 0.825. You know, the total length of the mirror here is about 0.89 meters, right? So there's about 0 0.89 meters, all right? That's the, that's the total length of the mirror. You can also find the total man's height, right? You can just add basically the 1.65 and the 0.13 if you wanted, right? 1.65 plus the 0.13 if you had to find the total height. This works out to be about 1.78, right? And then his total height. And now, wait a minute, is there a relationship between these two, the total height and the length of the mirror? Well, why don't you divide one into the other, and you'll realize that his total height is twice the length of the mirror. Huh. That's kind of interesting, right? So his height, his height is equal to two times the length of the mirror. Two times L, sub M, we'll call it. Okay. Now, is that a coincidinky? Well, not so much, right? Also, notice that, uh, you know, it does not matter how far he is. We didn't even take into account any distance to the mirror. They could have told you that in the problem. Who cares, right? So, you know, and you can almost imagine this, right? As he moves further and further away, right, these angles get smaller, right? But the angles themselves get smaller. That's fine. They're still equal, though. Okay? But since these angles get smaller and this axis gets bigger, this height stays the same. And you can prove that to yourself, you know, using trigonometry if you wanted. So, yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff kind of wrapped up into this one problem. All right? So, guys, anyway, um, you know, what's the distance related to the man's height? So, I guess that's it, right? Height is two. His height is going to be two times the length of the mirror. All right? So, yeah. That about does it for this one. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. All right. And if it did, give us a hand. Like, subscribe, maybe even mention us to your friends. We'd be so appreciative of that fact. And by the way, if you're taking pre-calculus or uh, chemistry, and uh, if this is sometime into the future, I'm sure we're going to have a lot more topics out there. Uh, what we're doing is solving a lot of very, very specific problems. All right. And we're using the OpenStax books. Now, they're free. So even if you're not using the OpenStax book, just download it for free. Go to their website right? Find a similar problem in the OpenStax books to the one you might be having. I almost guarantee that you will find a very similar problem, if not an almost identical problem. All right? Watch the video. You'll see how we solve it, and then you just apply those principles to the problem you might be having. Thank you guys so very much. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.